Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks, my go-to site to download high-quality digital assets such as 4K and HD videos from their one-plus million stock footage library, sound effects, and even After Effects templates. They make it super easy to search and download whatever digital asset that you want and helps creators like me tell our stories. And if you'd use Storyblocks, then you might be familiar with Restock, which is an initiative from Storyblocks for more diversity and representation in their stock library. Well, recently, they hired six creators from the LGBTQIA plus community to film inclusive stock footage that truly represents them. Storyblocks is even building out more authentic content filmed by creators from the Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities, which is awesome. So if you are looking for authentic and inclusive stock footage filmed by amazingly talented creators from those marginalized communities, then Storyblocks is the place to go. And if you want to sign up, then make sure to click the link down below. It really helps this channel. And thanks, Storyblocks, for sponsoring this video. Color grading your video footage can be complicated as it is, especially when it comes to skin tones. Trying to dial in proper skin tones in your videos is something I think a lot of people tend to forget, myself included. And I think a lot of the reason why is because it just seems kind of tricky to do. And I'm not the best when it comes to color correcting and color grading, like I am still learning as a creator. But I did find a way to fix proper skin tones fast, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so this is the clip that we're going to color grade. It's already color graded, and I love the way the skin tone looks, and just everything about it looks really clean. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the effects so we can see what it looks like before and see what it looks like after. So this is what it looks like before. This is Sony a7S III S-Log3 footage, nice and flat. And I'm gonna put the effects back on and boom. Yeah, looks really, really good. All right, so we are just going to start over. All right, here we go, bye-bye. Cool. Now I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro to color correct and color grade, but the same principles should apply no matter what editor that you use when it comes to adjusting for proper skin tones. Uh, all right, so we have our color grading workspace all set up. And if you don't know how to access that, you just go to window, go to workspaces and go to color. I made a custom workspace for color. And so I'm just gonna stick with that uh, because I want to see all my color correcting tools as well as my scopes, which is this panel right over here. And when it comes to adjusting for skin tone, we're gonna to wanna to look at this vector scope right over here because information from this particular scope will help us adjust for proper skin tones. All right, Sid, stop stalling and let's begin. All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to convert S-Log3 footage to the Rec. 709 color space. So we're gonna to go to basic correction and we're going to use my custom LUT and boom, looks good already. By the way, feel free to download that LUT. It's a really good LUT. Now looking at the scopes and for the most part, as far as the overall tonality, of this clip, I mean, it looks it looks pretty good. We're not gonna really focus on the overall color grading of this particular clip because we wanna focus on skin tones, but overall, yeah, I like the way it looks. Okay, now let's go focus on skin tones, shall we? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go to the effects controls right over here, and we want to mask out a portion of my skin. And so we're gonna go down to opacity and see this pen tool over here, click on that, and what we're gonna do, we're going to isolate this section of my skin. So we're just gonna do that, we're gonna do that. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape, just as long as it focuses on that portion of your skin. There we go, very cool. And we're done. Just kidding, we're not. So now we're gonna go to our scopes and we're gonna look at our vector scope to see where this data, this color data, falls on this line, which is the skin tone line. And if you don't know what the skin tone line is, basically it's the measure of the color of blood underneath every human being's skin. So no matter what skin color you have, the color of blood is the color of blood and that color should fall within the skin tone line. Our goal for this is to put this data on the skin tone line veering slightly over to the red side. And according to the vector scope, we see that most of that data is on the skin tone line, but it's slightly veering towards the yellows. We wanna go the opposite directions and we wanna to go towards the reds. And in order to do that, we're gonna go back to the Lumetri color panel. We're gonna hit the curves tab and we're gonna go down to hue versus hue. There's an eyedropper off to the side and we're gonna click on that. And then we're gonna hover over to our mask area and then click on any point here. If you go back to the hue versus hue, you'll see three color data points and click on the middle, click and hold, and you'll see another spectrum of color. And since we wanna bring our skin tone towards the reds, we're going to slightly move this point up towards the reds. And if you look at the vector scope, you'll see that that data is shifting towards the reds. Okay, I'm gonna push it even more uh, just so you can see. Uh, if I push it up even more, you'll see now it's going towards the magentas. And so, yeah, that's what it does. But we don't want to do that. We want to bring it back to the skin tone line, slightly veering towards the reds. Something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
And so we're gonna go back to the effects controls tab over here. We're gonna click on the mask that we just made and we're going to delete it. And that is what our skin tone looks like. Okay, looking pretty decent. Here's what it looks like before. See that, got some greenish going on. And then this is what it looks like after. Very cool. And then from here, you can just take a look at your reference monitor. And if you feel like it's too red, then you can always bring it down, but at least you're going in the right direction. And uh, yeah, I think everything looks pretty good. I may wanna um, increase the saturation of my skin just slightly. And so to do that, I'm gonna go just above the hue versus hue curves, and I'm gonna go to hue versus saturation. I'm gonna click on the eyedropper. I'm gonna click on the same area of skin like I did before. And then it's gonna give me my color data points right over there, very similar to the graph below that. And then I'm gonna click on the center dot and I'm gonna slightly bring it up to increase the saturation. Yeah, that's looking really good. For example, I'm gonna bring it up even more. Got a little Trump tan there. So obviously it's too much, but uh, subtleties are the best. And so I'll probably leave it around there. Oh, very cool. All right, I'm gonna show you what it looks like before and after shifting the color and saturation. So here's what it looks like before. Got some greenage. And here's what it looks like after. Pretty cool. Now that might seem it took me a while to do because I was explaining it, but now I'm going to adjust with skin tones really quickly without explaining anything at all to some pretty cool music. pretty good. And that's pretty much it. That's how I try to dial in proper skin tones for my videos. I realize it may not be the best way to do it, but it definitely is a quick way for me to adjust for proper skin tones. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Let me know what other tutorials that you'd like me to cover, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.